<coughs> Thanks, Louis, for coughing right at the start. Uh, that's... Just edit it out. Okay, whatever. Hello there guys, what is going on? Uh, son of Chelsea, yes I am still alive, back here again uh, for something different, um, yes I've I've heard your calls, I've seen your comments, but uh, yeah I am sort of a hypocrite because you know, buzzing off of what happened uh, yesterday as we're recording now on Monday night, so probably this will go out on the Tuesday. Um, I'm thinking of doing something more audio based, it's just easier for me now, uh, being uh, in university now, like Louis has uh, recently gone to, you know, it's a little bit more difficult with time and everything. So if you like more of a podcast format, or maybe I'm going to get on guests and talk about football, um, probably, you know, di different things we can do, you know, maybe that would be uh, something that we, we could go into, but we're here today, me and Louis. Uh, how am you I your doing, first? Louis? I'm I'm good. I'm your am I your first guest? Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh, this goes to show how far friendship can stretch. Far, far so friendship. Cute. Even even a, even a cameo in CFC fanzine, you know. Oh mate, you got a little yeah. cameo. A cameo. Oh, did you pick it up? Did you yeah. buy one? I good picked boy. I picked up one. Of course, I pick up one. It's, uh, it's only a pound. Only hurry a pound. up. Only a pound. Hurry up. Um, so, of course, yesterday, Jesus Christ, Louis. Hey Zeus. Hey Zeus. I, I mean, I, I don't... Considering, like, um, going into the game, I thought mm -hmm. we have to win this because we lost our first two big real games of the season, Liverpool and Arsenal back-to-back. -back. And considering our recent results and considering the formation, which has seemed to have worked, which I'm sure we'll discuss about the formation and change of it. I remember, you know, just just thinking before the game, you know, this is this is a tight game, and I remember just before the kickoff, Jose Mourinho, of course, working his mind games, turning us round, uh, making us uh, shoot towards uh, the Matthew Arden stand in the first half. That's clearly a tactic that Mourinho tried to do to try and turn us round. Um, so we're shooting at the wrong end in the first half because, of course, it's traditionally known at Stamford Bridge that we like to shoot at the shed end first half. And then Matthew on in second half. And I think that was a little bit of me thinking, oh, this is Jose's mind games. But within 30 seconds, countdown, Chelsea, doing a, Chelsea doing a countdown, we score. I mean, and, and from there, it was just absolute madness. We, we scored again. The attacking football was brilliant. There wasn't a player on the pitch for me who performed poorly. What I like about this formation, and I don't know if you agree, Louis, is that seemingly now every player has improved because of it and everyone in the team is is there and, and their role is it just seems to highlight their talents even more I think I think that you could go from the back uh David Luiz now for me with the fact that he's got two defenders next to him now looks like he's got a free role almost like a sweeper type, type defender mm. Gary Cahill who had a shaky September now looks better uh, got the goal mm. yesterday. We know what Dave can do. Um, in midfield, you got Kante and Matic. Matic, I'm so we we can talk about Kante for days, and I'm sure we will about that goal. But Matic, like the way he runs, Matic today. is. I'm so happy with Matic because considering mm. where he was last season, he looked back to where he was. Um, we could just go on and on. Victor Moses, who's been a revelation, just an absolute revelation. I'm so happy for the bloke. He has been absolutely brilliant for us. Pedro's looked much better. Eden Hazard, I think, is the key to this. I think he's been given so much more freedom in this formation. And, uh, mm. you know, Diego up top, which luckily didn't have to really contribute yesterday because uh, our talisman, the man who's been banging in all the goals, um, didn't even have to contribute to the scoreline yesterday because everyone else was on fire. So, Louis, give me your like reactions to, to the game, what I've just talked about, you know. Give me, give me your thoughts. Mm. Well, if we're going through the team again, obviously Thibaut Courtois, as as much as he's been a, we, I mean, there's many words you could use for this, but I know uh, it's a kid-friendly zone here, but it's sort of like, you know, he's not been exactly great in terms of representation for the club. Um, yesterday, he stood out well. He performed well. Um, if only he did that every week instead of moaning about going back to Madrid, then that'd be fantastic. Um 
obviously our back three, like you said, David Luiz is a sweeper. Obviously, we were talking about him potentially moving back into midfield. Um, if he moved into midfield, I don't. I think Antonio Conte, like you said, he seems as a sweeper. He doesn't see him as a midfielder, and that's because I feel he doesn't have the discipline which Conte likes in the middle of the park. Um, as great as he would be at the passing, I just don't think he'd have the engine. I don't think he'd have the discipline. I think he'd be running off um, if he was playing as a central midfielder. Um, and I just don't think that works out particularly well for him. Um, also, I feel that uh, the... Well, Cahill, like you said, shaky. Just looked, looked good yesterday, looked solid. Aspilicueta, I remember saying to you when Conte came in and we had a brief chat about Aspilicueta and we weren't sure he'd be playing as a wing back. And I said he played as a centre-back because he's too defensive. Victor Moses, like you said, has been a revelation. been absolutely fantastic. Um, you have to have a lot of discipline to play as a wing-back. And in my opinion, Victor Moses has shown that he has that discipline. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's direct, he's powerful. He's something which, you know, it's tough people to deal with. And although he maybe wasn't good at West Ham, Liverpool, Stoke, wherever we loaned him out those past few seasons... He's always come back. He's and in preseason last year, me and you had conversations. He wanted to prove himself. He wanted to be good. Um, last this season, this preseason, he looked sharp. He looked good. We decided to keep hold of him, and what a great idea it has been. He's been performing excellently as a wing back. Um, Matic, I feel I've been incredibly harsh on um, this season. The past two games, like Leicester and Man United, he seems to have come back to form. I feel that's because he feels he can do his role better now with Kante next to him. Um, and he's also got the most assists. So he's clearly proven himself on that level, um, being able to pass the ball and being able to distribute now, uh, which means I think Fabregas, maybe not on his way in January, but he could be on his way um, come next summer, I think. Uh, you know, he'll be hitting 30, uh, and that may be the time when people decide he may let me not have a role at Josh Football Club. Kante and Golo, like you said, we can talk about him for days, but he can run for days as well. Um, he does the marathons for fun. I reckon he ran to the ground from home. Just in Golo Kante is just a monster. I love him to bits. Uh, and he obviously got a goal, which is good. Um, like I said, Diego, Talisman, excellent. Hazard, Freedom, excellent. Covered all my points there. Pedro, you got said to me at the beginning of the season, Pedro was going to be a really, really good player for you against uh, Le- Leicester. Um, he was going to, and Man United, and he was going to step up and take Williams' place. I would have laughed at you. I mean, he has those, he had that odd game last season, didn't he, where he looked good. I think this season he's offered a sense of dynamism. Dyn- dy- dy- dynamism? I can't say it. You know what I mean? No, dy- dynamism. 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 There you go. Um, which you okay, didn't okay, see Paul in the past season. Double Salami's running. Salami. Golf. Salami. <laughs> no, I think, I think you've covered most things there. And I think, considering, I actually think, and of course, there, 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 there is no, no one enjoyed it. But I think actually the three 0 to Ars- against Arsenal has actually I think I don't know if Conte would have I don't know how much it prompted him. My assumption is that game must have changed his mm-hmm. system, and I think it sped up the process because I think his plan was always to go to a back three. I think he at first came into the club. Um, I think there were talks of it him playing two up front, and I think he tried that during preseason. Um, and then we realised that we looked a little bit light in the middle of the park uh, when he did that during some of the preseason friendlies. Then he switched to the four-one-four-one, which I think just looks so much better. And then he tried that for the first few games. And then once we stepped up against Liverpool and Arsenal, two terrible performances, and you know the formation just got found out. And then I think since Hull, you just look at the stats. The stats prove everything. And I think that. He's he's found a formation that just seems to work so well with the players he's got, and mm. I'm just so excited now with the team. I think that uh, I, I did, there's so much to to love about the team this season. I think there's so much potential in so many different areas. The fact that there's so many things this season as well, just not that have been fully developed yet, and we'll have to wait and see because it is Chelsea. But things like the youth being given a chance, Chalabar. Um, the fact that last week against Leicester, all three of the subs were youth players, you could maybe make the excuse that, well, that was sort of forced on Conte because of the fact William and Oscar were out of the team. But, you know, a certain other manager that I'm sure we'll come on to that played a, well, was a big factor yesterday, um, I don't think would have made those decisions. I don't think would have brought on a Chalabar in key situations. And look at Chalabar, I mean, extremely, he is like a prime example of, for me, 
when the youth si when the uh, loan system sorry works well when you can take out a player get him loads of experience and then he comes back as as ready for the first team and my hope is Conte when he makes these statements like if your you know age isn't I think the the quote I may have misquoted him but you know age isn't really the big defining factor if you're good enough you'll play and I think that's a philosophy we can all get behind and I think it's something Chelsea fans have been wanting for a long time and seeing Chalabar, Aina, uh, Loftus-Cheek, all these players and as well players like Moses, fringe players who would have constantly just been loaned out now being given a chance I think yeah there's so much more to to like about the team and okay. you know I think seeing players like Hazard who you know, last season, I think for most of it, we all thought was a pretty much a, a done deal. I think we all had, had thought, well, that's it for him at Chelsea. But seeing him this season, he's still one of my favourite players to watch. Uh, the way he glided for that. I mean, Matic played a massive, that, that assist, one touch, like first, just one touch pass to Hazard. And then Hazard in just, just it's it's typical, it's Hazard at his best, just gliding past players. And uh, considering he sort of fell away in the two games against Liverpool and Arsenal, in the last two games he's played really well again. So, and mm. I think that's mainly down to the formation. So, kind of moving on, I want to. We we can probably talk more about the game, but I think it's it's the elephant in the room. Let's talk about a genius or uh, someone who maybe isn't so much of a genius anymore. That's sort of up for debate. But Jose Mourinho, I think. Of course, that was always going to be dominated by yesterday. Um, he didn't get as much of an applause as I think I expected him to, but I think that almost was in a sense because of, um, I think Matthew Harding played a huge part in the game because, of course, this co, co line with his, uh, coexisted, sorry, with his like um, the 20th anniversary of his mm. uh, tragic death. And I think that was such a fitting tribute for him that they, they Chelsea, you know, you could criticise Chelsea for a lot of things, but I think the way they handled the, the tribute to him pre-match and the fact that we had such a brilliant performance, which is so fitting for such a great man who was, who was always going to be in the heart of Chelsea. You know, um, yeah. he, I think he almost, there was so much, you know, um, remembrance about him on the day. I think that almost overshadowed Josie in a way. And I think yeah. because it's Man United, I think that played into it as well. Um but I mean, from my reaction, I mean, there were certain pockets of fans who did sing like you're getting sacked in the morning and uh, you're yeah. especially you, you do get those pocket of fans. But I was one of those. I think after the third goal, there was quite a large chant of Jose Mourinho, which went up, which I was quite happy with. So what did, what did you, See, gauge? Those, what those, did you gauge with, with, with the fan reaction? When, when we were talking, of, when people were singing Jose Mourinho, was it in the Matthew Harden? It was mainly taking the mickey. It wasn't anything serious. I sung it, you know, Jose Mourinho, great hero of ours. And then the more I listened to it and the more I looked round, you know, the Matthew Harding was saying, you're getting sacked to them all and all that. I wouldn't have expected that. I mean, that's something... I, I look at it and you look at players who have come back. Juan Mata got an outstanding reception. He got clapped. He got all of that. He's coming on. Everyone said, said did whatever. For me, Mourinho, it was, it was surreal. It yeah. was a strange reception. And it was almost as if... People weren't putting him in the same bracket as William Gallas, per se. But it was almost that, it was on the borderline of, you know, we don't like you to we like you. And it was, it's like seeing one of the exes that you get on with, basically. That's that's basically what it, it, it felt like. And, you know, it, it was um, it was a strange scenario. And I, I just, I just person, I personally was there, you know, going, it was Marino. But, like you say, Matthew Harden was the big key yesterday. And, um, you know, we wanted to get behind our team. And obviously, we we're going to, you know, welcome back Marino or that. But what I noticed was the club didn't... When we welcome someone back, normally, so we welcome back X, Y and Z to Stamford Bridge. Didn't really get that with Mourinho. No, there was, was almost... no, there was really no mention of it at all, other than the fact... It did feel a little bit surreal looking down at him on the touchline in the opposition dugout. And I think yeah. we... I mean, just from a personal point of view, uh, I'll always hold Jose in the highest regard. There's never... Uh, there's never going to be a moment where I think negatively of him to tell you that there wasn't sort of a satisfaction to a way of them having Jose. I think the, the satisfaction mainly in regard to Jose, other than it just being smashing United, which is always uh, a massive pleasure. You know, it's, um, it's for, I think the thing with Jose, it's them having Jose and probably, you know, us being able to get one over on Jose because 
you know, I, I thought it would have been typical of him, just like he did with Inter all those years ago, come back and, you know, do us over tactically, you know, and, and after yeah. seeing what he did at, at Anfield on Monday, I was getting a little bit concerned. But I think what really, I think what, in a way, what yesterday did was sort of now it's, if it wasn't before, we fully now are in a different era of Chelsea. You know, yeah. Jose is the past, Conte is the future. And that doesn't mean we can't respect Jose and we'll cherish all those memories we had with him. But this truly is now Conte's Chelsea. And um, it truly was like the, the focus sort of shifted as the day went on from looking at Jose as sort of, mm. you know, our manager, our, our Jose Mourinho, you know, who will always be Chelsea. Then shifting over to looking at Conte at the end, urging us to, to support the team at 4-0 up, you know, praise this team for, for what they've done. You know, I think that's... A symbolic thing in a way you know i just think it's uh it's one of these things you know and it's uh it's more just you know smashing united and i think there are more sort of things to come out of mocking united you know the fact that looking at paul pogba a player who's supposed to be the most expensive player on the pitch in, in the world sorry and looking mm. at him and i watched him yesterday and i just look at him and i think well i'm sorry can if if that if you're worth 89 million please tell me what Kante is worth you know <laughs> Oh, Kante was without doubt one of the most spectacular players in that pitch yesterday. You know, I feel like he's finally found his feet at Chelsea. I mean, obviously when he was first first came in with that four one four one formation, he was doing not two men's job, which he's a fam- which he's famed for a lot from last season. He was doing three men's job because normally you'd have two high work, hard working players next to each other in that lesser team. Yeah, drink water, yeah, Kante. Pair of them work really hard. When Matic has come back now and he's morphed himself into that hard-working player who goes up and down, you know, he, Kante looks a lot more at home, a lot more stable. And um, I, I just, I just feel Kante was an absolute, is, is an absolute gem. And to think we got him for thirty million is absolutely ridiculous. Just goes to show Leicester's, uh, you know, but they didn't know they were obviously going to win the league. So thirty million would have seemed like a like a snip if they were well projected to survive, weren't they? So survive they did in Champions League. They've definitely survived into the group stage out of the group stages. So mm. for me, Leicester City are a, a club which you know a huge were a huge factor in getting hold of Kante. And Kante is without doubt one of the best players in the Premier League in that position. I feel I wouldn't say the best because you know I don't want to shoot myself in the foot and you know cause havoc. But I think he's uh, he's definitely up there as one of the best. Um, you know he's, he looks like, he looks at home in that Chelsea team. I mean that moment when he went through and um, and scored the fourth. It just pretty much it was one of those moments where like it sort of like marked the day as quite a special one that we're going to remember for quite a while. You know, because beating yeah. United, a team like United, all we can say about them, you know, they are Manchester United at the end of the day. I have no like hesitancy to call them the biggest club in in the country i think that i think that's what they are you know you look at the history of united and being able to smash them that convincingly is always nice and you know when kante runs through and goes for if hazard does that you know we're all going crazy what he done and i know you could of course look at the united defense and you know go well oh, should have you know it, it's terrible defending but it was one of those moments one of those surreal moments where you think it, it's literally like watching it's like playing fifa do you know what i mean it's it's yeah. it, it was it was a moment where you think this can't really be happening you know kante scoring at especially that type of goal i think you know i think when when we look at the game 4-0 now at the start of the season after three games i think this season was a really unpredictable one like in terms of going into it i had sort of no expectations with chelsea in truth after last season my expectation and hope was top four, and it still is. That hasn't changed. Um, after three games, I think people were still sort of getting... We had really a, a brilliant start to the season, you know, won three games in a row. Then we had mm. the basically terrible September, Swansea, and then we had the games against Liverpool and Arsenal, which really helped put us back. Um, but then we've had a really strong... Well, up to this point, we've got, of course, got two games remaining this week. Um, this week against West Ham and Southampton to end out October. And if we can get positive results, it'd be a really, really strong month. Um, so, where Louis, where do you think about like it's only October, and I'm still saying top four should be the aim. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try and push you and say, oh, can we win the league? Because, but, but then when you look at the table, oh, and no. you look how tight it is. I mean, we... Oh, don't, don't join him. Please don't be one of those people. No, I'm not. No, 
mate i'm gonna say it right now i'm i'm asking you your opinion i'm just saying i'm just saying off the games we've seen this season and after our first real big win of the season mm-hmm. with a new formation mm-hmm. where do you see us not just in the premier league you can say fa cup league cup you know where do you see chelsea you know what, what do you think the expectations are for this season or are you sort of nothing really has changed because for me nothing really has changed for me i'm still thinking top four mm. Well, nothing really has changed for me, but I think it'd be nice to see a cup run. Um, and I think with the players we have, we should be challenging for a cup. I mean, I don't think those players, we haven't won an FA Cup for a few years now. And I'd like to see one of those. I'm not, I know that makes me sound like an Arsenal fan, you know, get an FA Cup. But, you know, if we can get an FA Cup and build on that next season, um, that'd be great. I mean, the, import, like, the importance is building. If we, The big thing to look at is go, right, if it was me at the beginning of the season, I would have gone, right, these are your targets. This season, top four. Next season, win a cup. Season after that, win the league. Season after that, you know, build from there. We'll see how it is. You have a three-season plan. This is what I want you to get in these three seasons. And then now I'm going, right, mid in December, if, if let's see we're three points from the top of the league in December, just, just hypothetically, um, I'll go, right, targets have changed. I want you to try and win a trophy this year. And we're still, and we're still in the League Cup, so I go, right, we beat West Ham, we beat whoever we get next, yada, yada, and we go, Daniel, right, this is what it's looking like. I expect you to try and challenge for this trophy. This is what I want you to get. Da, 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 da. With the players we have, we should be challenging for trophies. We should be challenging for trophies. But I'm saying now, Premier League title, I think, is out of the question this season. I don't think we've got the squad depth for it. Um, I'm not a Liverpool fan, so I'm not going to say it's our year. I don't think it is. Um... So at the end of the day, I, I, I believe, I feel that um, we're going to be, uh, we'll definitely be top four. We should be top four. Mm. There's a lot of challenges challenges for those that, those four positions. You know, mm. you'll have us, Man United, Man City, Spurs, Arsenal. That's five there already. Five, one of those teams is bound to miss out. It could be us this year. And if someone said, you're not going to get top four this year, you'll finish in Europa League and you can build from there. I'll be like, fine. I'm not going to moan about playing on a Thursday night because, frankly, what's different to playing on a Thursday and, well, playing on a Wednesday, playing on the Saturday and playing on a Thursday and playing on the Sunday? There's no difference whatsoever. So, you know, it's it's going to be building on it and see what happens. That's that's all I can that's all I can say. I think we can and I think uh, we have the ability to get to top four. I think now I'm more confident because we seem to have a settled formation and... Um, I generally think if Costa continues having the form he's in, continues scoring goals, I generally think he can have his best season for Chelsea. I just when I look at Costa, I think he is so focal. And then when you look at Hazard, and currently now everything's sort of on cloud nine right now. Everything's perfect. Uh, mm. All the players are playing well. We've won three in a row. We've had clean sheets. We're you know everything seems very positive. Um, you know there are still some questions. I think Fabregas. You know, I, I still think he's one of those that I think can still maybe be utilised. But the problem is, I think at this point with the formation now he set himself, Conte, and I'm not going to start saying Fabregas should be thrown in, um, Bashwai should be thrown in, because really, how can you say that? You look at a formation. I <laughs> I love the fact that we have a basically two weeks in a row. Was it two or three weeks in a row now we've had? Definitely two weeks. We've had an unchanged side. I think he is going to change it up on Wednesday, and I wouldn't be. Too he's going to have to. He, I he's going to have to throw in Batshuayi. I think he'll throw in. Uh, Fab- I think Fabregas might start on. I think we'll see Chalaba maybe start. Be mm. interesting to see what he does on Wednesday. He, he can't start a three-back formation uh, on Wednesday because we don't have the players for it. Yeah. Uh, unless you want to exhaust them. Because uh, we got the game tough. on Sunday, a tough game away We've, at Southampton. Southampton. Southampton is a hard ground to go yeah, to. Very tough. Um, game. I mean, they've held City this week. They missed, you know, they were a very, very strong side. Uh, look, it looked against City, you know. Charlie Austin scored before that game. He'd scored four and four. Did he Did he score? He's, no, he didn't score, did he? Did he score? Who against? Charlie Austin, uh, Man City, he didn't. No, he it was uh, Redmond who's been in really, yeah, really good form. Exactly. Redmond's another player to be worried about. Uh, but before that, Charlie Austin has scored four and four. They're a dangerous side, Southampton. Mm. And, you know, you, you, we need to be wary going into that game. But the thing, like you're saying, we're on cloud nine. You need people with level heads to sit there and go, OK, it's great we won Man United, mm. but you've got to go on to the next game. This is what we're thinking. Right, we've got West Ham, then we've got Southampton. How would you play here? How would you play here? Well, for a start, I'd rest Costa, because let's be honest, 
his hamstrings can't take a game after game after game after game. We saw that at the back at the back end of the season we won the league into the last season. He 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 wasn't fit. Um so he needs resting. I'd rest Hazard. I'd rest I probably wouldn't See, I, I want to say I'd rest Pedro, but I don't. If William can fit back into the side, I would. I would play him. But I think William's going to struggle for a place in this team now. Personally, I think that you know it, it's going to be a very, very, very tough decision to make for for Conte. Only if all the players keep on playing well. Uh, that's, Ex- exactly. That's the Ex- thing. I mean, currently now there isn't really a player, and isn't it good to look at a Chelsea side for two game for now two games we can look at. And go, you know what? I don't see like I, John Terry isn't fully needed. You know, I we yeah. we we'd, we'd all of course love seeing JT in the team because he he's JT. But we're not all sitting there going how it's not like a Benita situation where you're sitting there going, well, why isn't he why isn't he playing? You know, why why is he on the bench? You know, I think mm. I think that's a real positive. I think that's something we've got to be happy with and Kurt Zuma tonight uh, played for the uh, played 45 minutes for the development side um, so he's coming back into fitness and hopefully if he can come back 80% or 75% of player he was before we've got a, another solid defender we can utilise in that formation so um, yeah I think we're going to wrap it up now um, as I said this is probably going to be the format going forward hopefully you guys enjoy it I still enjoy talking about football. I was kind of sparked to do this yesterday when chatting to a, a mate of mine who, who um, used to support my channel and, you know, said, you know, and just sort of realised that I still do enjoy talking about Chelsea. It's not like something that sort of left me. But, you know, um, hopefully you guys still like this channel, would still like to see me uh, do stuff. And, uh, yeah, pretty much. So, Louis, do all of your, like, social media sort of call-outs. Where can people find you? Cool. How can they support you? on uh the internet oh yeah well obviously like dan said he's he's, he's gonna keep this going he's gonna come back into the game but obviously um right now like i said it's tough so uh, for people already saying you know where's dan all that on 100 chelsea he's still here but you know what i mean i've chatted to him about it you know it'd be great to have him back whenever he can but you know what right now he wants to focus on his uni and that's fair enough you know once this that's cool so if he ever wants to come back to the game you know he'll be back you know it'll be good but to find me Obviously, you've got my YouTube channel, The Boogaloo, which will start uploading again because I'm starting a podcast, funnily enough, called The Orange Segment Podcast with a few of my mates from uni. Uh, just chatting about football would be pretty decent. So that'll, that'll be going up on there. Obviously, I'll be uploading there again. So look for The Boogaloo. Dan will leave a link in the description as per usual. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Louis the Boogaloo. So if you want to find me on there, I'll be there as well. Uh, right, that's not going written down yet. Okay, next one you've got uh, 100% Chelsea. Obviously, we're giving away, giving away a signed John Terry shirt. So basically, if you want to win that signed John Terry shirt, see, Dan didn't get to do stuff like this. I bet he's really jealous now. Um, you have to subscribe to the channel. You have to watch Lawrence's. He's a, a good, really, really good guy. You have to watch his match review, um, share it, sub- uh, fo- subscribe. Well, like I said, subscribe to the channel. Da-da. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Snapchat. Like our Facebook page. Do all seven of those things, and you could be uh, potentially be winning that shirt. Um, and obviously, you know, subscribe to 100% Chelsea. All social media links are down in the description for Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, and yeah, that's that's where you'll find me the majority of the time. Uh, I'll be about down there. And uh, Dan will be here doing his stuff. And you know what? Stuff's looking bright for him. And uh, he's going to be doing really good. But he's, you know, he's still not as good as me. So that's fine. But don't worry about it. That, that's just good enough, Lou. Cheers, mate. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, as I said, uh, you can pretty much as... The links probably in the description below that were there months ago are probably still the same. I'm, I'm on Twitter at Son of Chelsea. I've kind of been more active on Snapchat recently. Uh, recently got into that. So Snapchat Son of Chelsea, Instagram Son of Chelsea, and of course on here. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, tell me your thoughts on everything we've sort of discussed here today, the new format. Uh, all of that good stuff hit the like button if you enjoyed the video thank you guys and i'm sure i will see you again